Dan? Mika, glad you could make it. Yeah, 6 a.m. band practice is pretty hardcore. It's better for the guitars. It's colder before sunrise, so the strings are more tense. They're well rested from sleeping all night, too. Huh? What the fuck are you talking about? Never mind. This place seems cool, though, once I could actually find it. The sign outside says Carpet Kingdom, and in the front hallway, there's a bunch of industrial kitchen equipment and, like, half a truck. Oh, yeah. This place used to be a carpet factory, and the guy who owns it works on cars in his spare time. It was the left half of a truck, though, split right down the middle. He can probably sew it together with the right half of a different truck. Anyway, this is the space. We've got 15 people splitting this room, so it's actually pretty cheap. Where's everyone else? Well... Our drummer Arlen is on the way, but it turns out most of the band isn't as dedicated as I thought. It's bullshit. One night when we got really drunk, they all told me this band was the most important thing in their lives. And now, only a few years later, they have completely betrayed me. It's like if Jesus was surrounded by a dozen Judases at his famous dinner, and there was only one guy who stuck by him. Basically, a reverse Judas. No worries. Uh, what if we just work the songs out as a three-piece? You think we can conjure sprawling post-rock epics drenched in torrents of reverb cascading with shimmering arpeggios that soar to the heavens as they culminate in fuzzed-out crescendos that reveal blissful epiphanies before tapering off into the quiet and eerie miasma from whence they came? All of that? You think we can do all of that with just three of us? Basically, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Uh, what instrument are you going to play? Well, I could play piano or guitar, but I was thinking I'll play a harp. With some delay, it'll be kind of soundscape-y. <laughs> we, won't, we, we won't be needing any delay pedals. They only serve to obscure our political message, which is basically that politics are fucked right now. Pedals exist only to anesthetize the listening public into complacency. And plus, I can't afford any right now. Maybe that's Arlen. Yo, what's up? Are you Dan? Yeah, that's right. Wait, you guys haven't met? N not in person. We met in the replies to a Rex Rhapsody tweet. He asked, what's the best band name on a Matapia? We both said Oingo Bongo, and everyone else was saying Wham. You sure that's an onomatopoeia? What makes an Oingo Boingo sound? You've never heard of an Oingo Bongo? I did my master's in Humber on it. <laughs> All right, well, that's a sick dinosaur hoodie, Arlen. Thanks. It's tough to find one with Anglosaurus and Iguanodons on it. It's mostly T-Rexes and Velociraptors, the mainstream 90s dinos. And they're especially hard to find in adult sizes. I mean... It's maybe four sizes too small, but, but like the look works. It's a European fit. Also, there's a Spinosaurus on there, if you look at the back. Whoa, yeah. That's crazy. My favorite is the Donkulosaurus, though. And I hope you know as much about drumming as you know about the late Cretaceous. I do not. But the late Cretaceous would be a cool band name. Hmm. Okay, well, we're already called Autumn's Journey into Fall. Damn. I already booked us 10 shows in Canada until the promoters we were called Dino's Delight. But I let them know about the name change. We hit the road tomorrow, by the way. All right. Well, okay. We've only got one song, but it's 30 minutes long, and we can stretch it into 35 if needed. Why not 40? What? That, that would be a disaster. Just, just follow my lead, and we'll be ready by tomorrow. Okay, but I gotta move some things around in the van. I've got a life-size animatronic stegosaurus in the loft I bought off eBay from a rainforest cafe that shut down. Maybe we can use it as a stage prop. It could be our Eddie. Steggy. I, our music has a strong political message, and dinosaurs just aren't anti-capitalist enough. Dude, dinos are the OG anarchists. There were no rules back then. You could eat meat, you could eat leaves, you could even eat people if they had existed. Dinos go way back, man. I'm talking dinarchy. Now, with Steggy, I had to outbid a TGI Friday's franchise owner for it. He's going to be pissed when he sees it fighting the man instead of shilling for two-for-one fried margarita dippers. Buy one, get one margarita dippers are back? Only for a limited time. Then they will disappear like the dinos. That's right. My bedroom window faces out onto an alleyway. And across that alleyway, there's some guy who has a rooster. Not in his yard or anything. I think it sleeps in the bedroom right by the window. It might be a roommate. 
every morning, every hour, on the hour, it makes a very loud rooster sound that jostles me from my sleep. There's a big church bell that rings every hour, and the church bell alarms the rooster, who then alarms me, which causes me to spring awake, flailing my arms, smacking my alarm clock, which then causes it to go nuts. And it's on the rooster setting, so basically it makes a rooster noise, which then agitates the rooster living across the street. This happens every hour. Usually, it's a real problem for me. But on this morning, I had to get up at the crack of 8 a.m. to get to Standard Supply extra early, thanks to those evil Fairbanks who took control of the bar. This sucks. Why do we have to wash the glasses? Beer has alcohol in it, which is a cleaning solution. Plus, it has bubbles, like soap. Up until now, we've been cleaning the floors with beer instead of soap. But sadly, it seems like things are going to be different around here. The Fairbanks are making ch-ch-changes, just like David Bowie, if he had the personality of Hitler and the bank account of Hitler. Hitler was rich, right? What kind of fool would vote for a leader who isn't rich? They want the windows to be see-through now. How can we run a business if people can see inside from the street? We're going to be self-conscious and nervous all the time. It's like they want Big Brother watching us 24-7. Or at least whenever he passes by on the street. And apparently we're not allowed to play Tickle Wars Legends on the clock anymore? That game fosters a close and healthy relationship between co-workers, and it's so fun! They probably knew I was winning all the time and wanted to sabotage me. I racked up so many thousands of tickle points I was able to convert them into one real dollar in my actual in-game checking account. They're afraid of us. They know our Tickle Wars talent is going to make us rich someday. If they tried playing on our server, we would kill them. I mean, actually kill them. You hear that? Hear what? I think he meant the door, not the music. Music? Well, well, well. If it isn't the three highest ranked Tickle Wars Legends players in the Midwest region. That's right. Our guild has over 5,000 Tickle Points in our coffers. Not you. He meant the two of us and our loyal Toady. We have over 6,000 Tickle Points. You three? But I thought you hated Tickle Wars Legends. Once we unlocked Brawl Mode, it got really fun. We couldn't stop. And now we beat all three of your high scores. Next will be you in real life if you don't get scrubbing. Chop chop. You can't say that to an employee. You're not an employee. You're an imbecile. And that's a legal term recognized by the National Labor Relations Board. It's in your employment contract. But how come we can't play TWL on the clock and you can't? Our scores are so high, you will never be able to catch up. We need you working, not clicking and tickling. Unless the customers are willing to pay you to tickle them, but that's a different issue. Making you clean this place with soap instead of beer is just step one. We also need new ways to bring in revenue. Since you can't book any good bands, we need you to get some shitty ones in here. But we also need a gimmick so people feel like it's okay to enjoy subpar entertainment. We could offer pony rides during the music. Like keep a pony in the bar? Yeah, it could live in here. We'd finally have use for all of this hay. No, throw out the hay. I'm already sleeping in the Murphy bed here. We could add a bigger one that's pony-sized, and I'd have someone to tell bedtime stories with. No, I have a better idea. We are going to host a battle of the bands. Single elimination, band against band. One song each, no holds barred. Tournament style rules. You know the drill. Our social media guru, Rex Rhapsody, will be judging the performances. If we're going to do this thing right, there also needs to be a significant prize. A pony? A pony-sized Murphy bed? The winner will get to write any message they want on the cube marquee for one weekend. (gasps) The strongest band under the heavens tournament will commence in one week. I'll leave the sign-up sheet right here on the door. Oh, and if you want a shot at putting your message on the marquee, I suggest you give up Tickle Wars Legends and practice your singing. You're going to need all the help you can get. But, of course, you only have one week to prepare. Even a year of training would never prepare you to go face-to-face with some of the city's greatest challengers. Ah ha 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 ha! That's right! (laughs) Shut up, Toady. Uh, uh, Yes, ma'am. Okay. Anyway, uh, we're out of here. Get back to scrubbing. Oh, no. What are we going to do? About what? We have to enter that tournament and win. Do we? Of course. I want to put my Tickle Wars Legends handle on the marquee. My tickle tag. That way, strangers walking by can friend me and send me free tickle points out of the goodness of their hearts. That's not a bad idea. 
but I'd rather use the marquee to promote my solo album. I want to do that too, but in an opposite way because I don't agree with the way that you do things. Well, my album's called Trials and Tribulations, Volume 2, the craziest story ever told. No one understands my struggle. Well, my album's called Trials and Tribulations, Volume 2, the craziest story ever told. No one understands my struggle is the worst album ever. Well, I haven't written any songs yet, so there's no way you can say that objectively. An album with no songs. Now I've heard of everything. Songs are kind of tiresome. An album with none would actually be refreshing. All right, so we all have our own reasons for entering this thing. I hate to admit it, but the Fairbanks are right. We need to work on our singing skills, and we've only got a week to train. Well, they told us to get rid of all this hay. Maybe we can lift it to get stronger. After all, the vocal cord is a muscle, and getting all the other muscles stronger will motivate our vocal cords to step it up. Hay is for horses. I'm going to lift my voice in beautiful song. Hit it. The next week was the most intense week of my life. Besides the time my plane went down in the Andes Mountains and I had to almost eat a guy, but then a food plane crashed right next to us and we ate McDonald's all week till we were saved. Anyway, for the next seven days, we did whatever we could to prepare for the Battle of the Bands tournament. We lifted kegs. We delivered beer to the elderly who can't make it to the bar so easily. Basically, we were like old school milkmen where the elderly folks would leave their empty beer bottles on the stoop and we'd collect them and bring fresh beer the next day. We also milked the beer cows that produced the beer in order to develop a good work ethic and commune with the land. Charles lifted hay a bunch. Cameron took a vow of silence until it was time to perform to save his voice. Wow, that week flew by. Didn't you take a vow of silence? Oopsie! Aren't you worried about your singing since you didn't practice all week? To be fair, I was so busy lifting hay and donating it to the local shelter for hayless horses that I forgot to sing too. Oh yeah, I didn't sing it all either. Because I wasn't inspired. Oh well, I don't think the competition's going to be very fierce. Why would anyone want to set foot in this shitty hole? Wait, check this out. The sign-up list is full. It's going to take all of our power to defeat these fearsome foes. I just want to do my best. Who's on the list? Well, of course, there's us three. And Rex Rhapsody is the judge. Who's your favorite judge of the strongest band under the heavens tournament? And what's your favorite album that begins with a track called Intro? Did you know Intro is short for Introduction to the Album? Let's see, who else is on here? It looks like Rebellion signed up. When my anti-capitalist message appears in the cube marquee, the people will finally find within themselves the courage to fight back against all forms of capitalist exploitation, including the corrupt hierarchical structure of tournament brackets. Hmm. I don't know the rest of these guys. Who's Doyle McLaughlin? (laughs) Would you look at this place? I mean, I've heard of a dive bar before, but it looks like a freaking submarine bar in here. (laughs) Because of how low they dived. Guess I should have brought my scuba suit, because I'm about to make a big splash. What's up? Pleasure to meet you. Doyle McLaughlin's the name, and doing laughing's the game. I'm here to win that marquee message at any cost. Even my precious tickle points. Oh, you play Tickle Wars too? Huh? Whoa, what's that? Let's see. Looks like the next guy on the signups is Major McDonald's. Yo, word up, word down, and word side to side. Cause I'm twisting lyrical miracles worldwide. Flipping them up, cooking them in my lab. My pen and paper I must grab, cash I must have. Clothes look fab, never drab. Kill my haters like stub, stub. Got more money than the cash cab. Most of these rappers' rhymes sound prefab, but I'm eating their lunch at buffet like king crab. And I got a six pack of ab. All right. Cool. Anyway, the next guy is Snorri Slipnir. Now is the time of frost and blood for the return of Dilton. God of extermination is imminent. But before the final battle is at hand, I must do battle on the stage to claim the cube marquee in Dilton's name. Dilton? Is that a Norse god? No, he's uh, part of my own mythology I invented. He's the most powerful god in the world, and he's going to return. Wow. He sounds energetic. He is. He can run faster than any mortal being, including the Flash and Superman and Batman and Green Lantern, even in the water. And he eats a big breakfast right before. Bigger than all those guys' breakfast combined. Eating that much breakfast sounds uncomfortable. Well, he's not the most reasonable god, but he gets results, and soon he'll rise from the death realm and shatter the earth into a million pieces. All right. Let's see who's next. Just uh, one more name, and the name is... Eh? What did you say? It's just a bunch of question marks. Wherever there is a sign-up sheet unfilled, 
Wherever there is a battle of the bands, unbattled, I shall be there to fill that sheet and battle those bands. The becloaked vocalist. Wow, cool mask. Ah, that mask is so scary. It's just a bunch of plump purple grapes with a joyful grin. What's so scary about that? Not that in particular. Just masks in general are horrifying. You never know what may lurk underneath. I, I, I was scared of masks too, about when I was a poor little baby. Now I'm afraid of taxes and death because I'm a wealthy adult. But I guess they're letting little babies into this contest now. I'm not a little baby. Uh, I'm not either. I'm definitely not a baby. I fear not even the trembling of the earth when the final day of judgment arrives. Surely I am no baby. The mere concept of being a baby is a capitalist construct to make it easier to market baby products to the young. Hey, don't look at me. Well, if you guys aren't babies, who's the baby? What's your favorite song about a baby? Hush, little baby, please don't cry. Reggaeton remix by various artists. Feed Daddy Yankee. Ah, when death falls upon the babies like a blanket of frost, requiem for the babies part two. I prefer part one. Cool. Anyway, let's get down to business, shall we? Welcome to the strongest band under the heavens tournament. As you all know, these are tournament rules. That means if you are killed or knocked out on the stage, you're disqualified. If you step out of the ring or are rendered unable to move, same thing. If your opponent surrenders, well then, you win. If you can't finish a song for any reason, or if the judge rules your performance was worse than your opponent, you're out of here. I hope I don't get killed on stage. I'm very afraid of death. And taxes. If someone taxes me on stage, I might die. I'm not planning to kill anyone today, but nothing in this life is certain. Before we get to the tournament, you must complete an obstacle course filled with perilous traps and merciless robots trained to attack you, each robot ruder than the last. And if that doesn't sound challenging enough, wait till you see the puzzle of a thousand pieces which waits at the end. Were we supposed to set that up? You didn't procure the cube of six colors? The Rubik's Cube? It was too hard, so we threw it away. And what about the jump rope? Well, we were playing with it too much, so we had to throw it away. All right, well, I guess we'll just move on to phase two of the tournament. The tournament. I've prepared the bracket as follows. First up, Reyna versus Rebellion. Second, Snorri versus Doyle. Third, Major versus the Becloaked Vocalist. And last, we have Charles versus Cameron. Gee whiz. I never thought I would have to face my own rival in battle. We're not rivals, we're former friends, and soon we'll be a loser-winner duo. With me being the winner, I hope that part was clear. I guess I'm first. I hope I don't step out of the ring or get rendered unable to move. Capitalism has already rendered most of us unable to move, in a metaphorical sense. Right. Let's just get started, shall we? Earlier that week. So when are we playing Toronto? Oh, we're not. Montreal? Nope. Vancouver? I already told you, we're doing the Golden Horseshoe Circuit. We're not leaving Ontario. Is there a casino on the Golden Horseshoe? Maybe we could offset our losses from this tour. I've got a sixth sense that leads me to whichever slot machine is due for a hit. Like how bats use sonar. No, our first show is in Sudbury, home of the world's biggest nickel. How how big is it? It's nine meters. About as big as a Baronyx. That's a relatively obscure dinosaur, by the way. Right. Okay, now it makes sense. Maybe our album cover could be us standing in front of the big nickel with Steggy. Huh, that might make us look small, though. And and that's a problem, because our music is soaring and anthemic. Maybe we should steal the nickel to pay for studio time. Uh, well, it's only worth a nickel. And it's bigger than most cast registers. We would need to find a studio with a very large cast register. Do any of the shitty towns around here have the world's biggest ball of copper wire? Might actually be worth something. If the big nickel isn't exciting enough for you, we've also got shows in Echo Bay, home of the big loony, and Campbellford, home of the big toony. This is exactly why every Canadian band has 15 members. With these novelty coins so big, you better bring a big sound to the music stage, am I right? Can we turn the heat up? My harp takes a long time to tune and these temperature fluctuations are bad for it. Uh, I'm too hot as it is. I feel fine. Maybe we should see what's on the radio. This song sucks. No way, dude. This song stomps like a brontosaurus. To me, the static is more musical than the song. Major chords make people stupid, and so does having fun. (laughs) I like fun. I hate fun. 
The only time I feel alive is when I've just lost thousands on my first blackjack hand of the day, and I'm clawing back from the brink of financial annihilation, just praying for a miracle. And at the end of the day, if I somehow, against all odds, break even, that sense of mild relief that follows hours of crippling panic and stress, there's nothing better. Well, I'm the only one who can drive, and two rules states that the driver chooses the music. This van is not some kind of dinoarchic temporary autonomous zone. Chili directly from the can we stop at Tim Hortons? I need coffee. No, no, let's keep going. No, Nick is right. I need a box of 50 assorted Timbits. Justin Bieber-themed Tim Biebs are available for a limited time, now in chocolate white fudge, birthday cake waffle, and sour cream chocolate chip varieties. Wow, I want birthday cake waffle. I, I guess that sounds better than his music. I like his music. He's the platysaurus of pop. I hate his music, but I respect his hustle and his wealth. He would make a great gambler, if only his god did not forbid it. Okay, if we're going to make a stop, why don't we eat someplace more respectable, like um, Jack Astor's? Their old faithful beef macho nachos are topped with the three cheeses that I crave. And adding guacamole only costs two ninety nine CAD. They have a kid's menu for me. And the Angry Jack Epic Burger comes double stacked with two four ounce Ontario Angus ground beef patties, smoked bacon, American cheese, hot sauce, chipotle peppers, and onions, Nashville seasoned hot crispy fried onions, and sambal garlic aioli. Don't mind if I do. Okay, well, there isn't another Jack Astor's for 100 kilometers. Fine. Uh, what's on that sign for the next off ramp? It looks like they've got Gopher's Saskatoon Saloon, Hoser's Feed Bag, and Cecily LeBlanc's Charcuterie and Sex Shop. I wonder if they have dinosaur charcuterie or sex toys for dinos. Dino dongs. Probably not. Uh, let's just have Tim Bits for dinner. Donuts for dinner. Being a kid rules. Okay, first up, Rebellion versus Reina. Here in my hand, I have a six-sided coin with the numbers one through six representing the various heads and tails. The the six-sided coin? I've heard tales of this coin in the scriptures of Dilton. He used it to play craps against some very unlucky gods. Yes, well, we could flip this six-sided coin and have you guys choose odds or evens. That would be the easy way, the way that Dilton guy did it. The hard way would be a physical battle of fists and power to determine who goes first. But beware. You might die if you get hit too hard. That sounds risky, especially since I've never fought anyone in my life. But if there's anyone I can beat up, it's probably this guy. Let's just roll the die. You mean the coin? Yeah, sure. Do you want evens or odds? Evens, because I'm getting even with this bullshit system we live under. I like my odds, because this bullshit system is seriously odd. Guess we're not so different after all. We both hate this bullshit system. That won't stop me from crushing you in our musical battle. And that's a four. Did you know the Beatles had four members? Though some considered their producer, Max Martin, to be the fifth Beatle. And their mascot, the Blue Meanie, was commonly known to be the eighth Beatle. There was no seventh. He's never been wrong about this stuff before, so I don't suspect a thing. All right, here I go. It's time to take you down once and for all. Oh, geez. All right. Begin round one. 